Good afternoon. Hello, wherever you are in the world. Karen Frankel here saying hi and welcome to our critique and challenge session. Of course, I'm here to get you all drawing. I think you said that that was the first time with pastels. So what you'll discover as you um, go on with pastels is that the paper needs to have quite a bit of tooth so that you can put lots of layers on. And um, so I can see by the fact that there are some white little areas showing um, that you haven't filled in all the tooth, but it's actually given a really lovely um, rainy, rainy day effect, um, which is, I think, what you wanted because you've got those lovely reflections in the road. We can say hello to Savvy and to Gillian. My dog is really wanting to go down. Let's see how long I can keep her on my lap before I have to let her go down. Okay, so Savvy, really lovely. I assume that came from a photograph and not from uh, you sitting out somewhere in a cafe and watching the people. Probably the only critique that I have on that is the, um, is the perspective. And we will do a perspective lesson in the coming weeks. Hello, Bev. Nice of you to join us as well. So looking at um, your picture, Amanda, I'm just going to get um, something that I can draw with and show you that when we're talking about perspective, and I know that we haven't done this, so this will just be a brief, a, a, a very um, quick letting you know what's going on with the perspective. You've, you've definitely got these lines getting closer and closer as they go away from you, but all of the buildings need to converge at the same place. So that building at the back doesn't converge at the same place. This building here, if we carry on going up, that building would converge over here. If we join those two parallel lines, this building, the lines would converge off the page or somewhere there if we um, followed those two lines. And with perspective, all the buildings along this side of the road and all the buildings along that side of the road will all converge in the same place, which is called the vanishing point. And that place is... Um, the same as the horizon. So um, that's what I'll just mention for that. But it actually doesn't really matter in this instance because there's a bit of quirk to it. There's a beautiful character to this piece um, that I'm not really bothered by um, By the way this perspective has gone. It's, um, it's really lovely, really nice. Well done. Okay. And I think you sent in another one. If we go, oh, no, yes. If we go to your next one, you sent us all a rose. And that was a really, really lovely idea. Thank you, Amanda. That was very warmly felt by all of us who received it. Um, hello, Sharon. Welcome to our afternoon critique. Um, again, this looks like you've been playing with your pastels. And I really like um, how you've, blurred out, you've um, made it a bit um, muted in the background, that's beautiful, that is quite typical of, of um, pastels. The only thing really to say that I'd like to say is that be careful that your drawn lines, so these lines that you drew, these dark lines, be careful that they're either shadows or that those darks mix with the petals. So here that line is, is nice and dark and looks like the dark edge of the petal going around and it's blended in with the, with the red of the petal. But in other places like here, they look like outlines. So um, be aware of that. Um, you haven't outlined everything which is fantastic um, so it's not an outlined stylized rose it's a beautiful 
three-dimensional rose with lots of lovely form. So try to keep your lines on the edges of the petal um, to, to be blended in with, oh, I'm trying to do things here that are not working. So try to make these lines here not as sharp as lines and blend that color into the petal as you've done with this petal here. Really lovely and a very beautiful thought. Thank you. Bev. So Bev um, put this one on Get Drawing. And I know that these are paintings, but I don't know. I don't mind at all because they still follow all of the same rules or similar rules that you get for drawing. And um, even with the rule of thirds that I was talking about on Friday that I will be talking about at the end of this critique as your challenge for the week, um, this shot has got those rules of thirds um, really beautifully placed. So this is drawing with watercolor basically and um, we mentioned the word gouache in the get drawing comments. Gouache is basically opaque or not see-through, not transparent watercolor. There's a base of like a white chalky um, base put in with the watercolors and it means that the watercolors are not transparent or translucent. So that's what gouache is. So it goes down. Sometimes uh, poster paint does some, something similar. So technically, I guess watercolor is any paint that you can mix with water. You can mix acrylic with water and it doesn't have the same effect. Although if you mix acrylic with lots of water, then you will get a watercolor -y kind of effect. But technically, it's not watercolor. So depending on who you're talking to, if you're going to a watercolor art society, they may not accept paintings that are done in gouache because it's not traditional watercolor. But you can see with this picture, it has been used to really beautiful effect, soft and gentle. And as I commented on Bev's picture when it was in the Get Drawing group, I particularly love the shadows that are cast on the door. Um, the only critique I could possibly have with this watercolor is if you wanted to, you could exaggerate those um, shadowed lines, just get a darker color, so that if you drew with darker shadow, maybe not quite as dark as I've got on there, but what you would see is a greater contrast with the flowers and the vine leaping forward. Actually, definitely don't make it as dark as I've done. I'm just working on the computer. Um, but you may have got a darker contrast if you had made the shadows slightly darker on the door. Um, but really a lovely um, composition altogether. Thanks for posting it. David, you were admiring birds and hopefully spring is coming um, with these beautiful birds and you've drawn them really, really well. Um, I'm a little bit confused with this one as in it looks like this blue is a shadow of the bird, um, although the tail isn't doing that, so, so it's not really. And of course, I presume it, it's, light, it's flying in the air, so this, these blues are the blue of the sky coming through. Um, it's gorgeous. I, I haven't seen the original um, work, so I can't critique it based on that. Um, I wonder if the, if the wings are foreshortened in any way, but they very well might not have been. So the bird is, is really flying um, and the, photogra the photographer has um, taken it with outstretched wings and it's a beautiful, beautiful drawing and it's a lovely, lovely subject. So well done. Your second one was very cute. Actually, this was the first one that you posted. I really, really love those those early birds getting the worm and uh, 
talking to their mum about getting their their food. Um, I love the way that you've got some shadow underneath their wings there. Really, really nice. You've got shadow under the body there. Maybe you could have lightened the top a bit, but but that's that's a bit of um, um, I'm being very, very picky in saying that. The one thing that I will also be a little bit picky about is that these legs might be a little bit too scrawny, tiny bit too thin to hold up these birds. I, uh, looking at the birds, my, my daughter uses, uh, makes uh, needle felted birds and she examines bird pictures quite strongly uh, quite uh, a lot to see and usually these toes and legs are a little bit thicker to be able to have the weight of those birds um, on those feet but that's gorgeous that's very very charming and absolutely delightful now I don't think that Francis is with us this afternoon but I do uh, want to say how beautiful this portrait is I know this portrait um, personally because she has brought it into the studio um, for me to help with critiquing and uh, there's not much to critique I have to say with with Frances because she is well experienced particularly in drawing portraits of her grandchildren this is absolutely beautiful uh, apologies, I didn't put um, his photograph on the screen, um, but it is absolutely gorgeous. And what we found um, and what you will find if you try to do portraits of young, young children, babies. I think her, this nephew, this grandson is two years old, um, is that there's very, very little... Um, character in the face and every time you put a dark shadow on it makes them look old and it's very very difficult to keep the youthful texture of the skin and uh, Francis had to fade these shadows off into the cheek the shadows underneath the cheek are very much helping the smile um, and look how dark the eyes are still so don't be afraid of putting dark where there is dark. So the eyes are still pushed back, even in a child's face. And I'd also like to point out how pushed back these teeth are in the mouth. They are very, very much in the shadow of the lips and that open mouth. And they even fade back even more as they go round into the sides of the mouth. So whenever you do a portrait with a person smiling, regardless of whether it's an adult or a child, please um, don't put the teeth as if they're sticking out of the face uh, all sharp and push them right back into the mouth. That is an absolutely exquisite um, portrait of her grandson. Well done. Now we come to Jasminka. Jasminka has been busy with colour as well. So, so beautiful. And I gather, Jasminka, that that is an area near you. Did you draw that from a photograph that you have taken? <clears throat> I can see the delicacy of your pencil work, and it's really, really lovely. Well done. Um, pretty much the only thing I wanted to say about this one, and I noticed this when it came up on um, in the Get Drawing group, is... We possibly could have had a tiny bit of light coming through. You have got some light, but more light coming through. Oh, I should change my pen color. So a bit more light coming through on this inlet because the sky here is still reflected on the inlet in there. So, um, here you can see that most of this triangle is um, very very similar in tone you have got the darks here but have a look at how dark it is there we can almost not see the difference between that dark and the cliff face 
and the same here, that dark and that dark, whereas um, here we can't see the shadow, the cast shadow of that cliff at all on that water, and on this side is also um, not very strong at all. So that, in fact, will help you to get light in the middle here. So I can see that you've gone lighter on those two edges, but it should be light against the dark next to it on the cliff. So um, beautifully, sensitively um, drawn in. Well done. Nice colors. Maybe you could have got a little bit more texture in the in the cliffs there of the of these crags, but not you know you've got the main form which is the top of the cliff and the side of the cliff there which is what we want to see so if you had put more texture on it might have actually distracted from what you were doing so that's gorgeous well done um this was one that that came through quite early on i think it was possibly after i did um my dark and light shapes i don't actually remember when it came in and I really enjoyed seeing your message there that when there is no sun, the, the sunflowers look at each other, um, which I thought was absolutely gorgeous. Um, hello, Leslie. Nice to see you here from Durban. And my, my silly Bigsby is thinking I'm talking to it again. So let me just try and get my video back. There you go. Um, lovely, lovely drawing here. Um, I can see how you've seen the shapes of these petals, especially these ones coming forward. Um, let me just make that a bit bigger. So these ones are foreshortened and coming forward towards us. You've observed those really, really beautifully here, um, Jasminka. Um, beautifully done. Um, the only thing I could say possibly is it's darker as the center of the flower goes around. So it's very dark, got the most um, dark and light together where the sunflower overlaps the dark here that I've filled in with red. Um, and it goes lighter as it goes back. So we could have got more form showing the shape of that insert that roundness inside the sunflower rather than the flat even tone all the way through there. Um, possibly these, um, the shapes of the green are a lot darker than the shapes of the petal in tone. So it, it is a little bit confusing down the side here how those uh, light shapes are working. So um, if you had done the, the, the green in a half tone and then um, these darks in the shadows work particularly well, so that's wonderful, um, and then the back could have been muted back a little bit to show that these tones are a bit stronger than um, the background. But the shapes of the sunflowers themselves and the drawing of the petals is absolutely beautiful. Well done. Now, Rinza told me that she was not able to come to the critique session this afternoon. But this is what she sent in. And that is absolutely gorgeous. Beautifully, beautifully observed. Um, the only criticism might be that I think the shape of the original bone is quite long. Um, so the shape here, that length there, is much longer in the photograph. But that's really picky. If you didn't have the photograph there, you would absolutely know that that's a jawbone with those massive teeth um, in there. So I'm not... Uh, um, I'm not really critical of it from that point of view. So the shading is very, very delicate. I'm not sure if that was charcoal or pencil. Um, it's, it's been very carefully and beautifully done. 
and not overdone. So that's uh, well done from Rinza. Okay, I'm about to head into the critique session now. I'm going to try and put my dog down and hope that she doesn't, let's say, bye. Hope she doesn't bark her head off as we go into the critique session. So I'll just swap the camera over. To that. Okay, so you've got me in the corner. You've got a reflection ah, of that light. Can we work without it? Yes, I think that's okay to work without it. Um, hopefully that's not too dark. Please tell me if that's too dark and I'll try and do something else with the other light. I'll bring those lights around. Brighten the place up. And we won't have the reflection of that light. Okay, so what I've got is some of my f photographs. And what I'd like you to find is some of your physical photographs. Now, if you haven't got any physical photographs, you can print one off on, on your, from your computer. But you can also get some magazines and use photographs from there. Um, even a newspaper, newspaper photographs will do. If they are from magazines and newspapers, that sort of thing, they probably will already be, um, uh, what's the word, um, composed to a certain extent. Um, but it doesn't matter because you can still find other compositions. So I've got two of my uh, thumbnails here. This one is quite a small one. Not thumbnail, sorry, viewfinder. And this one is um, a bigger one. But before I show you, I've just remembered that I've got something else to show you. Um, and I hope that I've set it up. Ooh, I haven't. Let's see. Sorry about that. I thought I had. I'm just going to quickly open it up for you. Oh! I know why I haven't set them up. It's because they are on Photoshop, which is where we were. Please bear with me. Okay, back to Photoshop. Okay, so I will uh, put my face back. Are you missing me? I forgot that I had these. Now, this picture was taken from a um, a park that is Smudger's favorite, favorite park. That's actually a high school there. There's a jacaranda tree. And it's a pretty, not particularly well uh, composed photograph. You can see the pathway is dead in the center. That um, jacaranda tree is dead in the center. And then what I did was I lifted up my viewfinder, the very same viewfinder that I have on the desk, and I put the viewfinder up so you can see how I'm holding that viewfinder. You can zoom the viewfinder in and out depending on the picture you want. But in this photo, you can see that I've put the edge of the lawn, the back edge of the lawn on this third, and I've put the tree going up the string is slightly off to the left, but I've basically got the string going up um, the right-hand side there, and I've got the jacaranda tree going off this off the viewfinder, but filling the the top right-hand corner. So that what you can see in the frame there would make a much better photograph than that. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that. And one other one quickly that I'll just show you is that. So I did say on Friday that you can also use these viewfinders for still lives, that sort of thing. So in this image, um, that was a still life that we had up in the studio. And I have put the strongest dark area, which is the shadow on this broken um, uh, pot, um, and the light on this apple, it's actually a, a fake apple, and the light that's catching the edge here because of the broken pot. So I've put that 
around the intersection of the bottom third line and the left hand line and I've put the flower on the intersection that's also uh, an artificial flower on the intersection of these top um, two thirds and even the book that was there is going along the, the that um, third line there so I thought I would I would show you because it's so difficult for me to show you here how you would hold this viewfinder up this viewfinder um, when it's not on photographs and it is um, in front of you now if you would like that to be in front of you um, if you would like it to be in front of you then please get yourself a piece of cardboard cut out a viewfinder even if you don't put strings on you can just get a pencil and mark where the thirds are like that and you can estimate where those thirds are um, or as we did uh, last uh, two weeks ago when we made these things this is probably easier to do than than cutting it out but whatever you do so if you do make a thumbnail a viewfinder like this you absolutely can use it to find a, a picture like that so for our purposes and and what you can do um, for the challenge is you can use this viewfinder on your photographs to find a view so looking at that photograph it's not magnificently um, composed um, I take these types of photographs because I love the vegetation and then I might include that for detail in one of my paintings but I won't necessarily just take that as a photograph um, as, a, as a painting composition so if I turn my viewfinder that way and I put that road edge at the moment the road is going into the middle so that's probably not a good look and these trees are both on the left hand side and that's going into the middle so that's not what I'm after so let's see if we can make a better composition what happens if I turn it this way and I put my road on the third there in that bottom quarter that's a better composition because I've got that dark section along that two third, that third there. I've got that in the middle third. I've got that bush in that third and the top just reaching there. And then I've got the road here. So that's actually quite a pleasant um, composition. So that's an example of that one. Um, this photograph I actually did do a painting from pretty much um, as I composed it and at the time this was oh, about 10 years ago um, I, I had that disappearing dead center so let's see if I can actually improve um, on making it go dead center remember I did say that there are some times that um, you can change the rule of thirds but that it's a very very good classic starting point okay so if I were to do something like that and put the horizon on the bottom two thirds that's still dead center of the middle so it's it's quite pretty let's see if we can obey the thirds and make it even more pretty I'm actually half squinting my eye so that I can see the pattern of the darks and lights So I quite like that. So the third is going there. That passage through those bushes is going on that third now. And these uh, bushes here are filling uh, two thirds. So that's quite a nice um, composition there. So if, you've, if you're using your little one, even if you have got a nice composition, this is from a park in... Western Australia, a national park called Karajini, one of my favorite places on this earth. Um, have a look what you can do with your little string, your little um, viewfinder. That's quite a nice composition. Actually, I'm going to raise it so that the sky now is on the top third 
and that tree is on the bottom third, and sorry, not on the bottom third, on the right hand third, and that bush is happening on that third, and I've got a passage of light going through the middle third. That's not a bad little composition. See if we turn it the other way. So play with your viewfinders, make them horizontal, make them vertical. Now, you are welcome to do a full drawing if you wish, but you are also welcome to just do a simplified version of what your viewfinder is looking at, um, which, which is more or less a thumbnail. I don't think we've done a full thumbnail um, uh, challenge or lesson yet. I'll have to actually check that up. But if I was transferring that, even if I was holding it up, you don't need to hold that viewfinder up for the whole of your drawing. What you do is you put in your basic shapes. See, I'm using those, those grid lines like my, um, my third lines, like my grid. And I'm holding the pencil way back here. I should actually be using a 2B but you might not be able to see it if I was using a 2B. And I am gently putting in the basics of the composition. So that's all you really need to do. And then you can put your, your thumbnail down, okay? Um, and then of course you carry on with what are your dark shadows and what are your light shadows, pretty much like that process that I gave you a couple of weeks ago. So that's your challenge for today, finding some views with your viewfinder. I am very, very happy for you to find a view with your viewfinder, take a photograph of that. Is that a goodie? Maybe, there you go, that line's on the top, sorry. Um, I'm very happy for you to find a view and take a photograph of that if you want or scan it and send that in as a view and um, you could even show me what the whole picture looked like and then what the view is that you looked at so it's a nice little challenge for you i look forward to receiving all your drawings and i look forward to seeing you on friday i've got something a little bit different lined up for you and have a good week i will see you then karen frankel signing off and saying, get drawing. Bye-bye.